This is the first video in a series about tangents, secants, and angles of a circle. How they're interrelated and how we can find missing angles and segments and uh, lengths of lines. So first of all, what is a tangent? Well, the basic idea here is a tangent is a line that touches a circle on the outside in one point. There's an intersecting point and that's called the point of tangency or the tangent point. All right, so it's a pretty easy concept. You just touch the line in one place, that's a tangent. All right, then what about a secant? A secant is a line that passes through the circle in two points. So it goes right through the circle. Not necessarily in the middle of the circle, because that would go through the diameter, but a secant is a point of intersection with a circle in two points. Okay, simply that. Now the thing that happens here is when you combine tangent lines and secant lines, you get all kinds of angles and arcs that are formed. Okay, now let me just remind you here, the curved part of the circle that in, in between a couple of points here is called an arc. And there are certain ways to measure that. So when you cross a tangent line and a secant line or some kind of combination, then you have all kinds of arcs that are formed. All right, so we've got in this case, three arcs that are formed. We also have an angle figured, uh, found by the intersection of these two lines. And sometimes there's some inside angles, an inscribed angle and a uh, center angle. So what we're gonna do in this video here in the basics is just talk about some of the basic relationships between the angles and the sides and the lines. All right, we're going to look at a series of situations where a tangent and a secant line intersect and what happens to the angles in the line segments that are formed. So here's our first example. Let's say the green line is our tangent. Of course it is. It intersects a circle in one point. And the blue line is a secant because it intersects right there, of course, and down here on the circle. All right, so what we've got to do is look at the angle that is formed right here. All right, there's a relationship between the angle that's formed inside there and the arc that is formed by the intersecting points. All right, and the relationship is that the angle is one half the arc. So if the arc actually measures, say, 120 degrees, the angle would have to be 60. All right. Now on the other side, if this is 60, this would have to be 120, right, for my angle. And that means that this arc all the way around would have to be 240. Now guess what? When we add up this arc, 120, and that arc, 240, yes, it does equal 360. So the main point is the angle formed is half of the arc that's formed. Okay? We'll come back to this. The next concept is what happens when we have a tangent line and a secant line, but instead of intersecting on the circle, it's going to be an outside intersection. Okay? They intersect outside the circle. All right, the key is where these lines intersect, in this case, outside the circle. So that creates a near arc and a far arc, okay? Remember that it goes between these points right here. All right, so when you have a tangent line and a secant line intersecting outside the circle, this near arc is created and the ar far arc is created. And the rule is that we are going to be able to figure out the angle here created by the intersecting lines and it's a relationship between these two arcs. Here it is. The angle is equal to one half of the difference of the two arcs. So let's do a quick example. I'm just going to create these numbers. Let's say this far arc here is 150 degrees of the circle and the inside from this point to this point is 50. All right, so what we have to do is subtract the far minus the near 
And that, of course, would give us 100, and half of 100 is 50 degrees. All right, so this angle here would also happen to be 50 degrees. All right, let's move on to another situation. Here we have two secant lines that intersect inside the circle. The intersection point is inside. Now we have a couple of different arcs that are formed. All right, now in this case I have a small arc and a large arc, but they could be the same depending on um, where the secant lines are placed. And there's a relationship between the size of those two arcs and the inside angles here that created them. Now both of these angles are going to be the same because they're vertical angles. They're directly across from each other with straight lines intersecting, right? So let's just say that we take this angle right here, okay? It could be the same as that angle. Okay, that angle is actually the average of the two arcs, okay? So here's the rule. The angle, the angle of intersection of the two lines is going to equal to one half the sum of the two arcs. All right? So another way to think about it is if you're going to add two things together and take half of it, that is the average. So it's the average of these two arcs. Now let's say, for example, this arc right here is 15 degrees of the circle. And this other arc over here is, say, 55 degrees of the circle. All right, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take half of the sum, which is going to be 15 plus 55, which is 1 half of 70, and that, of course, would be 35. So this angle of intersection is 35 degrees, and it would also be the same right there. Okay, so if you know something about those two arcs, you can average them and find the angle that created them. And my final situation is where we have two secant lines and the point of intersection is outside the circle. Now, I had a previous example of a tangent line with a secant line that met outside the circle. And remember that we have a near arc and a far arc that are created. And the relationship is still the same. So if we have two secant lines that cross outside the circle, what we're going to do is we're going to take the angle of intersection right here. Okay, the angle is still going to be one half of the difference between the two arcs. So it's the far arc minus the near arc. Now just the way this works, the far arc is always going to be longer because the lines are wider apart there, right? So it's the large one minus the small one. That's a good way to remember it. So let's look at an example. What if this is a 10 degree arc from here to here? And what if this is a 110 degree arc from here to here? So I want to know what this intersection line, uh, angle line is. So I would take 110, of course, the far arc minus the near arc, 110 minus 10, and that would be one half of 100 in this case, keeping it very simple, and that would be a 50 degree angle inside those two intersecting lines. All right, so let's do a quick review. If the two lines intersect at the tangent point, in this case a tangent line and a secant line, then you have an angle that is going to be one half of the arc. This angle right here is going to be one half the measure of the arc. Okay, next. What if we have a tangent line intersecting with a secant line? We have a near arc and a far arc. We're going to subtract them and take half. All right. So that angle of intersection is one half the difference of the two arcs. What if we have two secant lines and they intersect inside the circle? So notice the pattern now. Outside the circle, we subtract. Inside the circle, in this case, we add, and that's another way to think about it, is the average. So we have this arc and this arc, we add them together, and we take half, 
and that will give us our intersection point. And a final example and situation was two secant lines meeting again outside the circle. And since it's outside the circle, think subtract. And we're going to subtract the far arc and the near arc. And then don't forget to take half.